Welcome to Professional Photo Workflow. We're going to be looking at the processes by which photographers distinguish themselves as professionals in an era where everyone with a mobile phone is a photographer. Our culture is awash in photographic imagery, bombarding us on all sides with an unending stream of visual media coaxing us to purchase more, support a cause, elect a representative, teach us something, or simply tell us what a friend had for lunch. If we decide to be serious about photography and we accept the mantle of professional photographer, we have to establish a way of working that merits that label. You don't want to be another monkey with a computer. Sure, if you give a bunch of monkeys enough time and the right tools, they can type, up, type out Shakespeare. The professional photographer has to be relied upon to deliver quality images on a moment's notice, time after time. He or she cannot rely on luck or a vast volume of captures to find the right image. If you are serious about your photography, whether you aspire to be professional or not, you need to be consistent in your photo procedures. You need to capture images reliably and consistently, enhance images to make them better than the average and take them beyond just a snapshot, track and manage images over time, deliver images for many different uses in print and online, archive your visual assets for possible future uses, and be able to repeat these activities consistently over and over again. Digital technology has changed the way we approach all of these activities. Many photographers are still struggling to come up with a good approach to the various challenges of digital photography. Although digital images offer immediate feedback and can be shared instantly, digital files are ephemeral in nature. They're simply ones and zeros and are vulnerable to erasure or corruption. Different methods have to be employed to protect against this vulnerability. And that means copies must be made as soon as possible and with some frequency. You need to have a plan to migrate digital assets to new media as old forms become obsolete. dpbestflow.org is ASMP's website devoted to best practices for professional photography. The site is a collection of ideas from some of the pioneers of digital photography and is constantly evolving to incorporate new software, hardware, and techniques. One of the important concepts offered at the website is the idea of the image life cycle. We can think about the different phases of a captured image as capture, the obvious and critical first step, ingest, the necessary second step, you have to get it into the computer before you can do anything with it other than preview on the back of the camera. Enhance, either as a creative activity or as simply a repair function, and that would include color correcting and retouching. Publish, which includes any form the image might take so that it can be seen by others, as well as basic delivery of files so that you can get paid. Archive, preserve and manage for the future. This phase also has to be considered as a choice to let images expire either when they've outlived their utility or more controversially to create scarcity as an art object with more value. Capture best practices. Uh, it is generally recommended to shoot raw if possible. JPEGs are faster but only appropriate where speed is of the utmost importance. RAW provides the highest image quality and the most flexibility for image correction and interpretation. Calibration. Test your equipment before you get in the field so you know how it performs and you can adjust for any color bias, etc. Know how to use your camera. That means read the manual so you really understand how to work the thing. And because quality is the only advantage you can have over the average amateur, you have to know how to get the best exposure, best composition, best lens choice, etc. Ingest is a critical phase where you get your images into the computer. Best practices include a method to validate the integrity of your image files, rename images, keyword images and or apply metadata like copyright info, and set up image folder structure to organize images. The working enhance phase is where you would perform any interim manipulation on your images like cropping, retouching, 
or fixing mistakes in exposure or color correction, etc. Creatively interpret and preparing derivatives, other versions, sizes, com compositing with other, other images, etc. Making image collections like books, web galleries, etc. Publishing is where you make images available to the world and that would include printing and web display in galleries and blogs, books and portfolios, and otherwise deliver files so you can get paid. The archive is where you protect your valuable image assets, and this requires a catalog to organize the images and allow you to retrieve images for reuse and ultimately it's your legacy to pass on to others. The archive is one area where we will be concentrating because it ends up interacting with the other phases of the image life cycle out of sequence. The primary consideration in our image making efforts is to protect our images as soon as possible and that means we have to have a plan to archive new images rapidly and get our copies started even before we might have finished images. We have to secure those raw files immediately if not sooner. One way we might implement an archive strategy early on is during the shooting ingesting phase. We have our camera, our computer, and at least two external hard drives. After we shoot our cards, we copy the images to our internal hard drive on the computer. Then the image files are copied to the first external hard drive and backed up to the second. We repeat this process for each card as we shoot it. This is how it might work in the field, even on vacation back at the hotel room. We can use some variation of this approach. There are at least three copies of every image file, one in the computer and two more on the external hard drives. Once a week, or perhaps after we get back from our trip, we get a third hard drive and copy our backup to that drive. This now becomes one of our working backups and we move the other one off-site as extra insurance against disaster like burglary, fly, fire, water, tornadoes, meteors, uh, you get the idea, to protect the image files. These shooting archiving activities can be automated and one of my favorite software utilities for this purpose is Image Ingester Pro. This is a one-trick pony that does a very good job of handling the ingesting process. Just about every conceivable action can be saved into a preset and used over and over again to copy the files, build a folder structure on the hard drive, validate the files, convert to DNG, apply metadata, and keyword. The ability to design and implement a folder structure based on date and job name is incredibly valuable and makes this application worth its asking price of $40. Again, looking at the archive phase, the raw file is our original image asset. We need to have three copies for full protection, and one of those copies has to be off-site. We want to secure our files as soon as possible. and archive raw files as well as all derivative files with the exception of different sizes because these can be generated easily by exporting from the archive. In other words, you don't need to save every JPEG email image or every size thumbnail, etc. Before you even set up an archive, however, you must have a backup plan in place. Know how you are going to do it with what hardware and software. Get your files organized before you set up an image archive. Build a logical file structure on your hard drive so you know where your image files are. Archive your catalog should reflect your file structure on disk. Uh, keep it as simple as possible. No more complication than necessary. Here is the file and folder structure that I use. The archive is organized by date, with the year as the parent folder. Job folders representing specific dates or date ranges are inside of year folders. Job names start with dates in the form of year, month, day. Raw files are in the raw folder. Work in progress files are in the WIP folder. 
and Z finals uh, represent delivered files. I, I put the Z there so that that folder falls underneath the work in progress folder. Image files are named with date and unique identifier number from the camera. Image files have your name. They're DNG format, which is the simplest structure because there are no extra sidecar XMP files. The goal here is to be able to find any image quickly under any circumstance. The catalog is separate from the actual images. This is important to understand when you start working with your catalog. The catalog references the actual image files. You definitely need to back up your image files. They are your primary asset, without which you have nothing. Do not, do not be deluded into thinking that by backing up your catalog, you have backed up your images. This is why I recommend keeping your catalog with your images on a separate hard drive. When you duplicate the disk, you back up everything at once. I like to use a multi-drive enclosure with a trayless design. Bare hard drives can be slid in and out easily. The A and B drives in the photo are my A primary archive and B first backup. The A drive is backed up every night to the B. Once a week on Friday, the B drive is replaced by C, which has been kept off-site for protection. It then becomes the first backup. I use it for the next week, and then B goes off-site. At the end of the week, C is replaced by B, and C goes off-site. This process is repeated week after week. The Mac drive is the clone of my computer's internal hard drive. This duplicate is synchronized with my computer every night, and I can put it into service at a moment's notice should the computer crash. Finally, I have an additional hard drive dedicated as a time machine backup. This is a Macintosh feature that does continuous backups automatically of the computer hard drive as extra insurance against user error in day-to-day -day work. All of the bare drives get archived in fireboxes once they are taken out of daily service. I have a very detailed discussion of my backup strategies in my ebook, Quick Before They're Gone, A Photographer's Guide to Backup, available on my website. Many of us are familiar with Adobe Bridge as a file browser. And though it is possible to implement an archive using a file browser, the advantages of true cataloging software like Lightroom should be mentioned. Both a file browser and a catalog program can look at image files, rename, organize, apply metadata, move, copy, and otherwise interact with image files. One of the main advantages with a catalog is that it can address image files that are offline. As your image archive grows, it will become large enough that it cannot fit on one hard drive, and eventually it will become inconvenient to keep everything online all the time. The catalog, being separate from your actual image files, can be configured to show your images and where they are stored even if they're offline. The catalog, especially Lightroom, has a persistent record of your adjustments, your history states, uh, and that can be very valuable. The catalog supports virtual copies or different instances of images as variations without actually having to duplicate your file. So, for instance, you can have a color and a black and white version from one RAW file. The catalog has more robust automation features for working on large groups of images, notably the ability to print multiple images to different sizes in one fell swoop, as well as exporting to different formats, building books, etc. The catalog has an API or plugin architecture that allows third parties to design extra functionality beyond what would normally be offered. The catalog I recommend is Adobe Lightroom. Lightroom offers all of the workflow features you could need in a very robust cataloging application. There is wide support for Lightroom among third party developers, and integration with Photoshop doesn't get any better as it is programmed by the same company. After using many other applications for my catalogs, I've settled on Lightroom as the one most likely to continue developing into the future. It, the DNA is just there. My approach to setting up Lightroom in an overall photo imaging workflow is to create a new catalog every year. This manages to avoid ending up with extremely large catalogs that slow down performance. 
I put the catalog on the same hard drive as the images it catalogs. There are some who would recommend otherwise, but I find it makes backup simpler and more reliable. For the most part, this means one image archive and one catalog per disk. I do consolidate multiple catalogs and archives into a portfolio ar archive on a separate disk. Uh, this portfolio archive continues to grow at a slower rate because it only contains my hero shots, the best of the best. Catalog and images are backed up when the disk is duplicated, and I maintain three copies with one off-site in a firebox. The folder structure on the archive disk is exactly reflected in the catalog, so I can always find files even when they are offline and I'm working with a copy of the catalog. Thank you for watching. Digital photography workflow is one of the most important aspects to master in modern photography, and it is often overlooked in favor of other more creative aspects like lighting, retouching, etc. Time spent organizing your archive, backup, and general workflow early on will bring many benefits going forward. I invite you to spend some time on my website and blog where I share my experiences as a professional photographer working in digital imaging for the last 20 plus years. I have many other tutorials available to help you with all aspects of photography and Photoshop. Thank you again, and I'll see you in the next tutorial.